Gamers, what's good? Doing something a little different today. Doing a damage report on Dragon Link. The new ban list is going to come into effect, I think, on January 10th. We lost our Wyver Burster. We lost our Chaos Ruler. And this list is heavily inspired by one that Trishal Up, the best Dragon Link player, posted on Twitter. He was running three Legacy Guard Dragon. I decided to run two because he wasn't running the Cross Out. And I still think we really need to run Cross Out. I'll talk about that pretty soon. But anyway, I'm not saying I know better. I'm just saying for me personally, I prefer that. Obviously, you can adjust your decks to what you prefer. I want to have access to cross out and be able to cross out an imperm if ever that comes up. So I'm running one imperm, one cross out. Whereas Trisha's list was running three guard dragon, no cross out and no imperm. First off, I want to talk about why Dragon Link is worse now. And then we're going to talk about some of the new cards. I'll show you some replays. We'll do some live gameplay. Uh, and by new cards, I mean the, the cards that we're now going to be playing to replace the old ones. Obviously, they're not new cards in the game. So one of the first things I noticed, I tested for about 10 or 15 games in Master 1 with Dragon Link just to get an idea of how they feel after the nerf. And one of the biggest things I noticed is um, without access to the Wyver Burster and the Chaos Space and the Chaos Ruler, all that stuff, our deck is significantly weaker to hand traps that it used to be a lot easier to play through. Things like Ash Blossom can have a much stronger impact now because you're a lot more reliant on your normal summon from Black Metal Dragon or your Rocket Engine. Like your main extenders are basically the Bestials. Uh, you can draw into Nocto Vision Dragon, but for the most part, you don't get nearly as much gas as you used to. And Chaos Ruler obviously was just gas, so losing that card as well makes it really hard to just like push through multiple interruptions. So it does make the deck significantly easier to interrupt, which is like pretty scary. That's actually why I decided that I would rather still run the Crossout Designator and the One of Imperm. Another important thing is I think our deck is a lot worse at going second. Uh, one of the best things we had with the Wyver Burster in Collapse Serpent is uh, those special summons are not effect activations. And you could also use them to chain block the search of your Link Monsters or vice versa. So they were really, really helpful when you were going second. Now with the Bestials, the Bestials all activate. So if your opponent has some type of like activation negation or just like effect responses, uh, it might be really hard to go second and get some bodies on the field, uh, depending on your hand, of course. That's not to say you have no cards that special summon like without an activation. Um, the Absa Router Dragon, if you have it, you can special summon it without activating anything. So that's nice. Also, the Red MD doesn't activate on special summon. So these are ways that you can kind of like squeeze your way into a board stage state when you're going second through a lot of interruption but overall it definitely feels a lot weaker at going second uh, of course we have a lot of hand traps which helps this is also another reason i'm running nibiru i forgot to mention this this is another card that trish was not running um i think nibiru is just a great payoff for maxi so i definitely want to keep running nibiru it's a very good card i mean right now not the best of all time because oftentimes vanquish soul does not play into it but uh most decks do play into it so i like to keep it around it's also a good way to waste someone's baron negate because a lot of decks set up a baron so at least you can force that out so on your like on your turn you know that's one less interruption you have to worry about now we mentioned them a little bit so let's talk about the cards that we're adding to the deck to kind of replace the stuff that we had before so like you saw here we have the world legacy guard dragon we have the nocto vision and another card that we're adding to the deck is Heretic Dragon King of Atom. So we'll talk about all of these, starting with the Nocto Vision. This is a pretty good extender for the deck. Basically, when you special summon a Dark Dragon Monster, you get to special summon this card from your hand. So, I mean, pretty good. Again, it's activated, so they could negate it if they wanted to, although I don't see why they would waste a negate on the Nocto Vision summon, unless like, like you're truly down bad or something. It has a draw when it's used as a link material, so you can actually use this draw effect to chain block your Romulus if you really need to get to your Ravine. You can play around like a Baron de Fleur or maybe a Ash Blossom by just chain blocking that, and then like if they want to, they can negate the draw one, but I don't see why they would. Most of the time, they wouldn't. So you're going to pretty much be guaranteed to get yourself a Dragon Ravine and a draw one when you see Noctivision, which is definitely not bad, you know? So pretty good card, pretty good extender. I don't think I would run more than one. And uh, I guess, like, I could mention the off chance that if you have Absa Router and Safer, you can discard the Absa Router to get Noctivision and get a search off Absa Router. That's going to happen maybe one out of 100 games. So, you know just a thing now let's talk about world legacy guard dragon as i said trish is running three of this and i kind of want to run three of this i just really wanted to run the cross out designator and the imperm and i already felt silly at 44 because his list was 43 and uh making it up to 45 i just felt like an idiot here so i was like you know i'll just run two but honestly 
it's a really, really good card. It feels really good to play. Uh, a lot of good things going for this card. One of the things that you can do with it is you can use it to make sure that you have access to your like Romulus combo. Because uh, if you only have like a rocket to normal summon and this card, well, you're not going to get a second dragon on the field in any other way than by using this. So, you know, you could like normal tracer, go into striker, activate guard dragon, bring back tracer, go into Romulus and do, you know, your whole rigamaru from there. So it is helpful to just make sure that you get access to that combo. Also, if you do have a lot of gas, like if you have bestials in hand and stuff like that, and you can extend your plays, then you can actually sometimes go World Legacy Guard Dragon, bring back a Tracer, and you can get an early Baron de Fleur on the field to play around Nibiru. This has happened to me actually more than once in testing. So this card is really good. I almost want to run three. Every time I see this card, I'm happy to see it. One last point about this card, it does have another effect. So like on activation, it's a monster reborn for a level four lower dragon. But then once per turn, you can target one of your dragons in the main monster zones and put it in another main monster zone. So you can actually use this uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon to move your Pisty under your Romulus, say, or any of your Link 2s, basically. And now you don't need to bring back another body or summon another body to be able to use the Pisty effect. So if you need access to your Pisty effect early, this could come up. It could be useful, especially going second. I could see it being useful. I haven't needed to do this because like if you want to get to your Boreland Dragon, you'll need to summon another body anyway. It's not like you get a, a, an extra body by moving your Pisty or anything. So definitely it could come up, but it's not like the most useful thing in the world either. And finally, let's talk about Atom or Adam or Adam. A tomb? A tomb? Is it a tomb? We'll say a tomb. I think that sounds the best. Uh, yeah, so once per turn, detach a from this card, special summon any dragon from your deck. Uh, it's two level six dragon monsters, which the beast chills are level six. And uh, this is just a really useful bridge from your beast chills into your rocket plays if you need them. So I think this card is really good. It's pretty situational. You won't always need to use a tomb, but it's just really great to have this bridge when your hand is kind of weird that you can use two beast chills, you know, uh, make a king a tomb special like a tracer from your deck if you need to or hell even a black metal dragon like honestly you can go full dragon link combo off of this so that's pretty useful as well so uh yeah definitely i think a tomb is a good add since we lost a chaos ruler i think it's a strong replacement shout out to trish for this i don't know I i'm sure he's not the first one to think oh two level sixes makes a tomb but uh yeah i haven't played with this card yet in dragon link and it seems like a really solid pick overall now the last thing i want to talk about before we get into some replays and some live gameplay maybe in solo mode or something to show what the deck can still do i would like to talk about the cards that got worse there's a couple of cards in this deck that actually got a lot worse so uh, we're gonna start off well with chaos space chaos space is not even in the list because like why would i run it but yeah this card i mean it's so much worse now your only real use for this would be to search a lubelion or a levianir um but like that's why we're not running levianir right you're not gonna run chaos space just to search lubelion you still have to discard for it lubelion is good and all but I, I really don't think it's worth running Chaos Space just to search Lubelion. Another thing that's kind of sad about this card is, uh, yeah, you're really going to miss that graveyard effect of shuffling back a banished card to get a draw. This kind of makes it so you got to be a bit more careful about what you banish with your bestials, because if you banish the wrong thing, like you're you're oftentimes just not getting it back. Your only real way to get it back is with Bestial Dispater. So be very careful about what you banish from your own graveyard. It's not going to be as easy without having Chaos Space around or Chaos Ruler to dump Chaos Space, right? Very sad to see this card go but it is what it is i don't think it's worth running i agree with trish on that another card uh, that got a lot worse is gamma uh, we still have to run gamma package if you want to be able to play the red eyes black meteor dragon and you kind of have to play the black meteor dragon because the black metal dragon engine is basically like the most important engine that you have right now in dragon link so yeah you have to play the driver and unfortunately now gamma does not get you into a chaos ruler which was like pretty busted that whenever you would land a gamma on your own turn you would get a chaos ruler this is still like a really solid hand trap obviously so it's not like this card is significantly worse but i did think it's worth mentioning that now you don't really get a payoff from summoning these other than like some link fodder material that you have to like just use at some point in your turn and the last one i want to talk about here is safert safert is a lot worse it's no longer a one card combo it used to be that with one safert you got full dragon link combo now with one safert you have well it depends on your hand really oftentimes you'll normal summon safert and not even use the effect or if you use it is because you have maybe like a serenir in hand uh discard serenir you get to go serenir effect dump a lubelion and search a different beast chill with the effect of your safert so like that's the best case scenario, I would say, for Safert. Like I said earlier, like you can discard Absolute Router if you're lucky. 
And uh, another thing, I guess, if you wanted to, if you need to, you could discard like a rocket caliber to search a tracer. I don't really see what scenario where you would need to do that, but that is an option you have. But yeah, overall, safer, not looking the best. Oh, I forgot to mention, now you run one for one because you got to summon that black metal dragon as often as possible in your turn one. So definitely run the one of one for one. All right, enough with the yapping. Let's get to the gameplay slash replay slash whatever I feel like putting in this next part of the video. All right, so first replay here. Um, this one, I do make a slight misplay in this replay, but I still thought it was worth showing off just because I do kind of go full combo for the most part other than that one misplay. So I think it's a good showcase of what the deck can still do. So, you know, we'll special out a Rocket Tracer, go Striker Dragon, Beast of Lubellion. Our hand was quite good, but we did not have an out to maxi. Uh, we go Beach of Lubellion, search Magnamut, go World Legacy, summon out the Rocket Tracer, then we can go Serenir. And as you can see here, because I have enough gas, I'm able to go back on the Fleur pretty early. We go Beach of Serenir effect in the grave, dump a Lubellion. And this is where I basically misclicked. Uh, I went Magnamut and I wanted to banish my Serenir, but for some reason, my brain shut off and I clicked Lubellion, which means we won't get a Branded Beast or Regained this turn. I was hoping to like set up a Branded Beast just for one extra interruption, but that will not be <laughs> a thing that we will do this turn, unfortunately. So banish the Lubellion. Both of our Lubellions are now banished, so it is what it is. Summon out the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, bring back the Rocket Tracer using the Red MD as well as my Striker. We go into a Romulus, Romulus effect. We're going to search ourselves a Dragon Ravine. I did not use my normal summon yet. We're going to go Ravine. We're gonna, actually going to discard the Sector Launch since I still have my normal summon. Send the Absa Router to the grave. Search a Rocket Recharger. Normal the Recharger. Go into a Pisty. Now here I could have moved the World Legacy Guard Dragon. Just so, like use it to move the Pisty. But it doesn't really change anything because we want to get to our Savage anyway. So I go Triple Burst. Go Pisty Effect. Bring back Serenir. Then I'm going to use these two to make a Beast Chill Dissipator. I'm going to go Dissipator Effect. Bring back my Banish to Magnumut from the Banish Pile. And using all three of these, we're going to go into our Link 5 Boroland Dragon. And they're going to go for Stovey Torby because we're about to end our turn. Set a Big Welcome Labyrinth and we pass turn here. We get to search ourselves a Ball Drake in the end phase. Our opponent draws for turn and they go for Nadir Servant. So yeah, I could have Baron the Flared their search, like their um, their Chandelier effect or Tor Torby effect, I mean. But um, I felt like I should probably wait and see if they have like a higher impact thing that I'd want to stop. Here, I think stopping the Nadir Servant is pretty good because they don't have a banished card. So if they want to, they can definitely get rid of my Dispater or like force out my Baron anyway with their graveyard effect of um, what is it called Entis. And they still get a search regardless. So I was like, you know, if they're going to get to bait out my Baron anyway, I might as well just negate the Servant at this point, right? So I negate the Servant with the Baron. Uh, we can fast forward a bit here because Chain Resolving is so slow in this damn game. Then they're going to go for a big welcome, summon out the Ariana and add it to hand. So yeah, I feel like they should have probably just said like an actual, just a welcome labyrinth, honestly. A uh, big welcome when you have nothing on the field is not that good. And it seems like they didn't have anything to put on the field before activating their big welcome, which makes it a lot worse. Uh, here they're going to get to go Stovey Torby and Chandelier. Add back the Chandelier to hand and summon out the Stovey Torby from the grave, right? So that's pretty good. They're starting to plus a little bit on their setup. Normal Ariana. I'm actually going to negate Ariana here. The reason I do this is because the only other monster effect I have to think about at this point in the turn is the effect of Lady. And with Bestial Dispater, if they activate Lady at any given time, I can shuffle back one of my Lubellions to pop it from hand so they won't get to summon it. So uh, we're just waiting for that at that point. I don't really care about any other monster effects. Use my Brolin there. They're going to go for a Sprite Elf. Pretty good, but we did search a Beast Shield, so they go Sprite Elf. We're going to go our Beast Shield on the Stovey Torby here to stop that. I don't know what kind of Sprite Engine they had access to in here, or if they were just playing Sprite Elf because it's funny. But either way, they're going to swing into our uh, Tracer, which we don't really care about. And uh, Main Phase 2, go for the effect of that and set up a Labyrinth Labyrinth. Then they're going to activate their Labyrinth here and set two cards. Not too bad, not gonna lie, not too bad, but I don't think it's enough. They're gonna go Big Welcome Labyrinth. I'm gonna chain Max C. Nice top deck, by the way, right? Nice top deck. They're gonna go Called By on our Max C. Um, at this point, I'm just looking at this board state and I'm like, man, this doesn't look good. Like, I feel like you would have been better off just going for a Welcome Labyrinth than a Big Welcome yet again, because what does Big Welcome even achieve here? I don't know. I don't really get this play at all, but they go for a lovely Labyrinth that they... And then they bounce their Sprite Elf, try to pop Boroland. They can't even pop the Boroland. Uh, they could have popped, like, the Baron de Fleur, and I guess that would have been decent. But then we still get to just, like, take over control of the game, right? So 
I mean, they had nothing else to do than just scoop at that point, I guess. Yeah, it was just pretty bad, honestly. But either way, they scoop up the game. I think that was like a decent showcase. I wish I didn't misplay with that Lubelion earlier in the turn, like in the first turn. Just so like we've, we would have actually gotten a nice full combo. And the route was kind of weird because I was playing with a pretty bizarre hand. Uh, but I still think, you know, it's a decent showcase of what you can achieve even with a nerf to Dragon Link deck. So anyway, let's move on to another replay. This next replay here is a short one. This is just a replay because I want to show you that Noctovision is good. That's about it. We're just going to look at what Noctovision can do for the deck. I already explained it earlier, but for people that haven't played with Noctovision, this is a decent showcase of what it can do for the deck when you draw into it, you know. Uh, so we go Lubelion here, Lubelion, search the Serenir. Then I'm going to Normal Tracer, go into my Striker Dragon. A Dark Dragon has been Special Summoned, so we can go Noctovision Dragon and Special Summon it out. Yep, Effect Resolves, Special Summon out the Noctovision. Striker, search the Boot Sector Launch. Then with these two, we can go into our Romulus. And we can go Romulus effect, chain block with Noctovision so they can't ash the Romulus. And we get a draw off of Noctovision, which really helps because uh, the draw power is good for our deck. We definitely love to see it. Here we get a Branded Regained, which is even more draw power. So that's even better now. We can go Beachel Serenir, banish the Noctovision, won't need it again. And we can go Regained, shuffle back Noctovision to get a draw. They're going to go for their Beastial Druid Swarm here on our Lubelion. Which like is not bad, but we can just get another one in Grave using Serenir effect, so it's not really the end of the world either. Here I'm going to go for a Red Eyes a Black Meteor Dragon, send something to Grave, activate the Dragon Ravine, and uh, I think my opponent scoops it up like right about here when we go Absa Router effect. Yeah, they just scoop it up here, but I just kind of wanted to show, you know, Noctovision, it's a good addition. You should definitely add it to your deck. Uh, let's move on. I actually want to show you a replay where I lose because I want to show like how we it's pretty challenging to go second without the wiper bursters and stuff for this deck. Actually, screw a replay. Let's just try to go second against the deck. So we're in master one here. This dude is playing some mishmash of Kash Tira and Tier Lament. Uh, they have set up a crime. So that's one Omni Negate. And they've set up a Solik. So you love to see it. Solik, crime, rule Kalos, Fenrir, right? <laughs> and look at our hand. You're looking at a hand of pretty much all normal summons, which means we get to pick one of these that we can do. Uh, let's go black metal. And uh, yeah, this is a perfect scenario where if we had a Wyvern Burster or a Collapse Serpent, you know, if they stop this stuff, at least we could banish from our grave the Striker Dragon that they would pop or, uh, well, they won't pop it, they would shuffle it back. Uh, you, you know, banish the Black Metal Dragon just to, like, you know, keep extending our plays and stuff. Whereas here, we just we just will not get to do anything. Um, I suppose I want to chain block. They have so late. Like, I don't even know what I can possibly do here. I guess we'll chain block the Black Metal because they're negating the Striker anyway. So let's just chain block the Black Metal Dragon, I guess. This is, like, terrible. Yeah, so Sulik, of course. Of course, we can't cross out Sulik. Um... And yeah, this is not even like a top tier deck. Like this stuff, this stuff is like tier three, tier two, you know? Oh, uh, we'll grab a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. They might just go Fenrir on our Striker and end our whole parade right here. They might just do that. Let's see. Okay, not doing that. Not doing that. But what's next for us here, realistically? Like, of course, if we had some Beast Chills, we might have been able to play this out. Here they're going share an effect. Um, we can't beat over Rule Kalos. Even if we beat into Fenrir with our red MD. Oh my god. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this was a pretty good example of what I was trying to say. Isn't this card like protected from some type of destruction? Uh, cannot be destroyed by... Okay, card effects. Sure. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go to battle. Swing into this. Hey, we'll play it to the end, right? We'll play it to the end. Go to main two and uh, activate this boy. Please? Please? All right. I mean, why wouldn't you negate that, right? Why wouldn't you negate it? So they get to negate and pop here, and yeah, we're officially out of place. That's uh, that's going second Dragon League now. That's uh, have fun with that. Have fun with that, Trish. 
Enjoy it. I'd love to see Trish in the comments be like, Hey, yo, actually, you could have done this, this, and this. And then you would have been like, there's just nothing here. There's just nothing. There's just nothing. All right, let, let, that's that's enough. I think I think I think I got my point across. Let, let's get out of here. So yeah, I don't want to sound too pessimistic about the deck. I mean, going second, if you get into your hand traps, I mean, you can still go second and do very well. I don't want to sound like it's impossible to go second and win. But here, let's do a little bit of combo and, you know, let's just do a combo for fun while we're talking about it. But yeah, the deck is just it's just not feeling as good. You know, it's it's not feeling as nice to play feels a lot more fragile to hand traps not to say that it can't play through hand traps it's dragon link of course it can but man feels a lot more fragile here i would probably chain block my black metal dragon we already have ravine in hand so that's pretty good so yeah i would definitely chain block my black metal we get our striker effect go get ourselves the boot sector and then with the black metal obviously you would want to grab the red md here look man the deck is not dead it's definitely not dead uh we can go Actually, we could go regained here and shuffle back our striker that we banished. That's going to be pretty good. Get us a free draw. So let's special out the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon by banishing our striker. Then we can go regained effect, shuffle back our striker, get a nice draw. We love to see that. We love shuffling back a striker. Draw into Tracer is hilarious. That's so funny. All right, let's go Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and uh, bring back the uh, Black Metal Dragon. Yeah, this is like a really good scenario. We don't have an out to max C, so like in ladder, this might actually be a terrible hand. But uh, for the purposes of this, it's really good. Um, here, I would definitely go Heretic Seal to at least play around Nibiru a little bit since we already have the Ravine in hand anyway. So make a Heretic Seal, uh, go Black Metal Dragon. We can grab ourselves the Meteor. Grab the Meteor. Now, to be honest with you, I don't even know if I want to go Ravine here. Like, I really, I'm really, i really not sure if I want to go Ravine. I could lose the Nibiru. I don't think I want to use this Nibiru anyway on my own board. So, you know, go for this. We can discard the Nibiru right now. And get ourselves uh, to the grave. We'll probably want to send, actually, a Serenir. Yeah, send the Serenir. Serenir effect. Send the Lubelion. Reason for that is because uh, you contribute the Black Meteor for the Lubelion, so we're definitely getting access to it. And that'll give us access to both, actually. So let's send the Cypher Driver to the grave. Summon out the Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon. Go Lubelion on this. Very nice. Lovely. Lovely. So we get a Branded Beast and we get our Branded Regained, right? Great scenario. Awesome scenario. Branded Beast, Branded Regained. Lovely. Go Boot Sector Launch. Boot Sector Launch here. Uh, activate boot sector and we can special out our tracer so yeah you know like the deck still has it's nice like linear combos and stuff it's a bit more flow charty than it used to be but not completely flow charty i'll be honest it still feels like you can get pretty creative with your combos yeah i'm gonna go for rocket tracer right now we're gonna pop the boot sector launch grab our recharger and here we are not going into chaos ruler that is no longer an option uh, I probably just make a Pisty. Probably just make a Pisty here. And then I'll keep my Tracer on the field. We'll go for a Triple Burst using the Lubelion and our Heretic Seal. If my opponent held their Nibiru this long, um, I mean, it's not the end of the world. We would still, I guess, get Branded Regain to bring back Serenir, right? And we would have a Branded Beast. We would pass on Branded Beast at that point. Uh, let's go Pisty. Pisty, we don't have anything banished. That's annoying. If we had anything banished like that, we could summon back. What we could have done is we could have brought back the Red Eyes Black Meteor Dragon, summon a Dispater, Dispater effect, bring back a banished card. But we were just not that lucky with Beast Chills. We didn't draw like a activatable Beast Chill this game. Yeah, I don't, I don't love it. But honestly, the summon will just not matter. It's just going to be a Savage with a Boral End and a Maxi in hand, plus the branded stuff. Like it's still good. Like don't get me wrong. This is, this is still good. Um, it's just not ideal, I would say. So, you know, use all of these. Make the Boral End. You know, typical stuff. Boral End. Go. Ba negate the uh, Rocket Tracer. Bring back the Recharger. You know, it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. You know, you get your, your Savage with three Negates. Uh, you could make an IP, I guess, if you wanted to instead. I'd much rather have a Savage, I think. But IP is still a good card. So, here's Savage. And yeah, this is definitely not ideal scenario because we didn't see any activatable beast jewels, which means we had no extra gas, right? So like when you don't get that much extra gas, this is like a pretty good board for that. You know, we have both of our branded spells and traps on the field. We have our Savage and a Borland. It's not ideal, but 
that's just, that's what that's what the deck is going to be like now how do you guys feel about this stuff do you think there's other stuff that people might be doing with it like i could see some people maybe start running the dragon maid stuff in here I know the Dragon Maid cards are pretty good with Dragon Link. Uh, I've never really tried that build of Dragon Link like that, but I know some people like it, so maybe that that could be a, a new build that people start playing. Not really feeling these changes. I don't think the deck is going to be doing too amazing anymore, unfortunately. I did want to just make a video, you know, addressing some of the changes and maybe like updating you guys a little bit on what you can do with Dragon Link, what changes you might want to make. And, uh, you know, it's all coming from Trish, who is the best Dragon Link player. Make sure to follow him. Make sure to subscribe to him. All that good stuff. He deserves it, man. He's the GOAT. But anyway, guys, that's it for me. Thank you. Make sure to like and comment, okay? It helps me a lot. I, I really, I need, I need those likes, man. Those, hey, it, it helps. It helps me a lot. Thank you. Peace.